The food and beverage industry is a major consumer of water, responsible for about 20% of industrial water consumption worldwide. The food and beverage industry is one of the largest users of, of, of water, and they have a huge driver in reducing, reducing their water consumption by implementing good technologies, good solutions, good management systems to control their water consumptions. One person uses 50 liters of water per day, but 2,500 liters are used to produce the same person's daily food intake. Denmark has for decades had a focus on water efficiency. But what does a water efficient industry mean? Water efficiency is about reducing the water need in the production, while at the same time also looking on how can you uh, uh, reduce the spillage in uh, the water utility or the water supply. Due to political focus and strict regulations, Danish companies have long had to think about efficient ways to save water within industry. If you take food and beverage companies, if you take hospitals, if you take chemical manufacturers, they use a lot of water. And there is a cost of that water. And Denmark have had many years of experience with these obstacles, with these challenges. So that also means that Danish technology suppliers, Danish consulting companies, they have the know-how from Denmark because we, in many years we have been forced to do it due to the high prices. We have learned from each other. Ala has been bigger and bigger and the same for Danish Crown and the same for, uh, for Carlsberg. And they have grown and we have grown our knowledge. Motivated by high water prices and the high cost of water disposal, the Danish food industry has successfully reduced water consumption. Danish slaughterhouses are using 80% less water than a few decades ago. A water-efficient industry means managing water in a more intelligent way. This requires the right solutions and technologies. Is it possible to reuse the water, to recycle the water for another process not maybe not the process in doing the beer, but maybe in process by cleaning um, and so on. One of the options where you're not in contact with your, with your product is of course to use or reuse the water in, in secondary uh, processes like in your cooling plant. Um, that would be an option. And maybe other utilities you could find use of some of your process water from the production. I think the food and beverage industry have to put another perspective on uh, wastewater uh, and waste streams. Actually, waste and wastewater streams contains a lot of value. Uh, for, in, for example, uh, you can recover energy from the wastewater streams by by applying uh, anaerobic digestions, which will produce biogas that can supply your own production with energy, which is also actually reducing your CO2 emission. The Kalambor Symbiosis is first and foremost a company a collaboration. It's a network between some of the major companies in Kalambor. In the symbiosis, the companies actually trying to mimic nature by disregarding the concept of waste and closing some of the, the systems um, of waste fractions. That means that the companies are collaborating on recycling uh, water and materials and energy between them and thereby they uh, reduce the intake of virgin materials and they save a lot of money on waste handling um, and also purchases of, uh, of new um, resources. A popular saying of the symbiosis model is that one company's waste becomes the other company's goal. That means that instead of just producing in a linary manner where you take in resources, you transform them and then you uh, sort of throw uh, the waste uh, away, then you, you circle it uh, between partners and reuse uh, the materials.
So waste actually becomes quite valuable. Between the companies, uh, water is recycled. For instance, we have a process steam that is recycled uh, and sent from one of the major partners, uh, the power plant Dong Energy. It's sent to some of the other partners in the symbiosis. And in reverse, the power plant is receiving technical water. The Danish company Billon Aquaculture specializes in the primary production of salmon. The intensive recirculation technology of their farms means that salmon are now reared using a minimum of wastewater. This Danish technology has already been exported to Chile, Canada and Russia. In addition, it's being used in the Gobi Desert in China, where rainwater is a scarce resource. Increasing water efficiency and reducing the water footprint of a product will also lead to energy savings and significantly reducing the payback time on water investments. Of course you need to, to map both the economic and, and the water savings to be able to calculate what is actually your payback. But we see a lot of solution will, will have a payback uh, in one to two years time. Also uh, in, in countries outside Denmark.